Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing amazing. Back at it again. It's been like two weeks since I have filmed because we had a friend stay all last week. It was so much fun. And so, you know me, I'm too awkward to film when people are at home. But I'm back again today. And I don't know if you can tell, but I am a little sick. Uh, we went to a wedding this past weekend. I'll tell you about it in a sec. It was so much fun. And the bride and the groom have the sweetest little baby who's like, I don't know how old he is now almost nine months maybe i'm obsessed with him he's so freaking adorable and he had a cold of course on the day of their wedding he had a cold like of course but uh he's way too cute to resist so obviously i was giving him all the hugs and the kisses and now i've caught his cold it's not that bad i can still function and not like stuck lying in bed or anything but my throat hurts i'm kind of sniffly so if i sound a little off well that's why anyways today we are gonna be making some tomato sauce. I've got a huge haul. This isn't even all of them. Oh God, it's so heavy. Oh, a ton of tomatoes. This is probably the last of the tomatoes from the garden. And so I'm going to attempt to make some tomato sauce for the first time today. I'm not gonna make a whole huge batch just because as you will have seen in the previous videos, I don't have a canner yet. So I'm just gonna make enough tomato sauce for pretty much just tonight. And then the rest I'm gonna throw into bags and freeze so that I can make tomato sauce for the coming months as long as it lasts. So that's kind of the plan. I've got my water boiling in the back there. I'm going to do my new handy dandy trick of removing the skins that I learned last week. So we're gonna do that. Probably not on all of them just because I like the skin. Like my favorite thing is the chunks of tomatoes in sauce. So I'm gonna leave the skin on some, but probably all of the big ones, I'll remove the skin just to add some different texture. So anyways, as I do that, I will talk to you guys about the wedding. So, and of course, both my cats right now, they want to go out. They were already out. I'm not a horrible mom. We were out this morning and now it's time to be inside so I can focus. So do you hear me meowing? Yes, I know. I know you're very cute. You don't need to remind us of these. So anyways, yeah, in the wedding, it's my very first time being in a wedding and possibly like one of my only times I'll ever get to be in a wedding. And it was amazing. I was a bridesmaid and really like, I feel like that was kind of an honorable position, especially at the beginning when we first found out at the beginning of this year. Um, my fiance is super close with the groom. And so he was gonna be a, a best man or groomsman. Yeah, not, not the best man, he was a groomsman. Oh my goodness, I can't focus. Okay, I'm gonna put them out. Should I put them out? I don't like putting them out because they're naughty and they always try to jump the fence when I'm not looking. But also, I can't focus with the constant meowing. Okay, we'll see, maybe they'll stop. <laughs> you're so naughty, but you're so cute. Should I show you, should I show you guys? Look at my naughty kiddos. Hi, you're so naughty. Oh, well, yeah, I know that you're cute. I know you want to go out, but we're already out. We'll go out again soon. Oh, don't destroy mommy's cupboards. No, no, no. Silly boy. What a silly boy. <laughs> okay, we'll wait and see what happens there. Um, but yeah, my first time being... Oh, what was I saying? Okay, yeah. So my fiance is very close friends with the groom, and so he was just automatically going to be a groomsman. And then, so I think the... His, oh my God, it's so hard to not say people's names all the freaking time. <laughs> The bride was sort of just, I think just included me to be nice. But then over the course of this year, I feel like we've gotten a lot closer and it was just so much fun. I did her makeup, not like amazing. I'm not good at makeup. So when she asked me, I was like, girl, really me? <laughs> but I did and she looked freaking beautiful. I know that the bride is supposed to be beautiful, but she was just so beautiful. It was just, oh, it was so amazing. It was such a lovely thing to be a part of. I had so much fun and I really put myself out there because we had, I didn't know any of the other bridesmaids and we had a bachelorette party like a month before and it was the first time meeting all of these girls and I can't explain to you. <laughs> I mean, if you know me, you know, like I'm the most antisocial person at the best of times and especially being surrounded by girls that I don't know, I prefer hanging out with guys because girls just scare me and <laughs> boys are kind of just like more chill and easy, but girls can be mean, okay? So anyways, I was so nervous the whole week leading up to the bachelor party, like literally thought I was gonna puke and just like didn't wanna go at all. <laughs> but I went and I had fun, okay? I actually had fun, it was a good time. I grew to really like all of these girls. I'm gonna put the tomatoes in the pot now. And um, 
yeah, so I'm really proud of myself for putting myself out there, and I think it was really sweet to include me, and I had a really fabulous time, and I guess I gotta put them out. You guys are crazy. Why are you like this? Mom can't do anything fun with you guys around. You better be good. Go, go, go. Can you go out? Okay, you guys better behave. Ay, ay, ay. Silly kiddos. Anyways, I don't even know what I was saying. <laughs> it's so distracting. Oh gosh, this is making me nervous now. Okay, anyways, what was I talking about? Um, yes, it was very fun. I don't know what I was saying, but anyways, it was a really great time. So it was supposed to be a really small wedding. That was the whole plan. Oh, it's going to be very minimal, very chill. And then one thing led to another. And I think it didn't help that the bride's mom, this was like her only daughter. Of course, she wants to have a huge wedding. So she ended up paying for a lot and just adding more things. And next thing you know, they had a whole ass wedding. <laughs> it was so awesome. It was in her parents' backyard. They have like 50 acres. And oh my gosh, it was just so pretty much my dream wedding if I'm being honest with you. I've always wanted to have just like a backyard wedding, but something really big and beautiful like that. They have this huge tent with all the tables, flowers. Because there was so much space, you were able to do a lot of really fun things as well. So they had a ton of games out like um, Can Jam. Have any of you guys played Can Jam? It's a Frisbee game, so much fun, I highly recommend. Uh, cornhole, of course, they had washer toss, which I had never even heard of before so much fun it turns out i'm really good at it i actually got the winning shot i was really proud <laughs> definitely a lot of a lot of fun and there was dancing too and i don't know it felt like why well, i liked it so much because it felt like i was clubbing which i don't i never liked clubbing i was always the girl who would go for half an hour and then leave my friends would be like where'd one go and i feel like i just i hate clubbing <laughs> But it was the fun part of clubbing where you're just dancing with your friends. They had loud music. They had the lights going outside. So you're not overheating. You're in nature. You're surrounded by people that you actually love. I just had the best time dancing all night long. And you could tell the bride and the groom had an amazing time too, which was awesome because you could tell in the build-up they were stressed. But they had so much fun, which made me so happy. And oh my gosh. Oh, and another thing that I loved is they had a golf cart. And they have a bunch of trails cleared. So we went golf carting a bunch through. And I tell you, you're drunk, you're on a fast golf cart, because he did some like maneuvering to it to make it go faster than normal. And you're going through the trails. It's literally like a roller coaster. It was so much fun. Oh my gosh. So I had the best time. And I'll be honest with you, it made me really want to have my own, like a big wedding like that. I mean, it wasn't huge in comparison to how they could be. Like, I think they probably spent about 20 grand, which obviously is a lot of money, but where I live, just to rent a venue alone is 20 grand. And then when you're at a venue, then they make you use their bartender and all their alcohol. So then that's another 10 grand instead of two grand if you just bought a bunch of booze. And then you have to use their catering. And next thing you know, you're spending 60 grand. Like seriously, it's insane. So I know 20 grand sounds like a lot, but realistically for what they had, it was actually not that bad, although Again, I know it's pretty grand for a day is painful. But anyways, yeah, now I really want to have an actual wedding because I don't know if I spoke about it on here or it was on my previous channel, but we have been pretty much set in the last couple of months on just having a uh, almost like eloping, I guess. Like we're just thinking of going to the courthouse. We have a really pretty courthouse near us and just going and getting married with parents and maybe couple siblings something very small and then going out to dinner afterwards like literally that's it and then the next day just having a house party at our house and i was totally set and totally okay with that and we still might do that realistically i don't know but going to their wedding made me really want to have like an actual wedding because it was just so much fun and such like a special memory that you're gonna have for the rest of your life and yes it's a lot of money but maybe it's worth it i don't know we really were thinking about it we can't decide our the groom who got married, his parents also have a really nice yard. And we talked to him months ago about maybe getting married in his backyard. And he said that that's okay. So now we're like, maybe we do that. But then still we're looking at spending like 15 grand. And I don't know, I'd rather go on a really awesome honeymoon with that money than have one day. So I can't decide. I really can't decide. I'd love to know if any of you, um, do you regret having a small wedding or do you regret the opposite of having a big wedding and spending all of that money? It's hard. I really wish I just had like parents who would just pay for it all. <laughs> Without a doubt, I would have a nice big wedding, but 
I don't know, it's just such a lot, it's so much money and we don't have that much money, so I don't know. I'm not sure what we're gonna do, but I'll tell you, I really want to now, because it was just so much fun, the best wedding I've ever been to. And I think I said the first time I've ever been in a wedding, so I think that probably made it more special to actually be included in it all. And, oh, but the only thing that stresses me out the most still is the whole walking down the aisle thing. Now, it would help, you know, you're walking down with someone else, not by yourself, but everyone turning and looking at you, like the whole thing of how it's like, it's the bride, the bride. Ugh. Ugh. I do not want that at all. That is so terrifying. Don't look at me. But also, I want to have the wedding. And I really like, oh my gosh, one of my favorite parts was the vows, how they were saying their vows in front of everyone. I was seriously crying, trying my best not to tear up and ruin my makeup because we still have to take pictures. But it was just such a beautiful thing to experience to say your vows in front of all these people. It felt very spiritual. Like it just felt like God was there and it was really beautiful. And I really want that, but also money. And the thing is our house is like, our backyard is way too small to do the whole walking in the aisle ceremony that just wouldn't work here. So. Anyways, that's my little spiel, my little wedding spiel. I want a wedding, but it's expensive. So let me know your thoughts. Regret spending too much, regret spending not enough. I don't know. I don't know what to do. We have to pretty much need to decide by the end of this year. So yeah. Okay, let's check on these taters. These tomatoes. Okay, they're looking good. I'll probably, I still have a lot here. And I think I'm just gonna leave, I might wash, ew, some of these are kind of gross looking. <laughs> some of them really got eaten, but I might not use that one. Yeah, but I think I'm just gonna wash the skin on the rest of these and just slice them up and kind of mix it in. And I think we need to check, okay, I see my. <gasps> Gosh, those crazy kiddos. It's officially tea season, y'all. I have not drank tea in months, but yesterday my throat Really needed some tea and now I'm obsessed again. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I have these too. Oh my gosh, so many tomatoes. I'm really gonna miss gardening. It's just so much fun. I love being able to go outside all the time. Ugh, I don't understand why winter has to be so long. Like, I just don't get it. And I'm getting stressed out about the fact that I have to start wearing pants soon. Anyone else just like want to die when I have to put pants on? All I want to wear is a dress for the rest of my life. And I know some girls, they always say, oh, I wear dresses all year long, but like how? Don't you, like, how are you not cold? I don't get it. And now they're like, oh, I layer, but I've been like, but that, is that cute? How do you make that cute? I don't know. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, we're gonna go check on the kiddos real quick and then get back to making our pasta sauce. <laughs> Hi, kiddos. You being good? Hey, Bobs. Pretty girl. Okay, you guys being good? Good kiddos. Okay, put on my apron, because I was definitely playing with fire there, <laughs> wearing a nice dress and cutting tomatoes. And we're gonna get back to it. I've just peeled, or boiled all of the tomatoes, and I'm gonna take the skin off, and I put them in an ice bath, and I'm just gonna let them chill while I slice all these other tomatoes as well. And while we do that, I'm gonna try to keep a coherent thought and talk to you guys about something that was on my mind yesterday. I um, ventured onto the world of social media, which as I've said recently, I have not been on social media in forever, it feels like, and I've been loving it. Not just not posting, but not looking at other people's posts as well. It's just so freeing. I'm absolutely just, it makes me so happy when I don't go on, but I checked my phone, okay, I had to check a message and then, you know, you see a post and you kind of get sucked in and, you know, I'm pretty good now at the moment at least of just looking for not very long and then being like, oh, what am I doing? I'm stopping, thank goodness. But uh, yeah, I saw, I, I follow this girl, I really like her and she, everything she says within pretty much I agree with, I would say, I don't know, I haven't vouched every single thing, but I like her and one of her posts she was talking about ceiling fan girls, which I don't know, do I, should I be saying that? I'm worried that my, my content will get flagged now if I do say the actual term, but I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. And anyway, everything she said was true. Talking about how it's gonna make relationships really hard, all of it I 100% agree with. 
but then I was reading the comments and oh my gosh, I just think that kind of red pill manosphere type of vibe things always attract a lot of crazy men. And I've never met a man like this in real life, but all of the comments are so vile is really the best way I can think of to describe it. So obviously, maybe not obviously, if you don't know, I had an OnlyFans. Uh, worst decision, probably the worst decision of my life, I would say without fail. And I would not recommend it. And it's something that I definitely feel called to speak out about more as I kind of get my life together a little bit more. Um, yeah, I really want to not only encourage girls to not make one if they are thinking about it, which to me, the circles that I'm in now, it blows my mind that anyone would still be considering making one because I think it's so obviously like a horrible decision. But even still, you know, I, I run into girls and they'll be telling me how they're thinking about making one. And I have to be like, no, are you crazy? Like, why would you do that? Do not do that. So if that kind of blows my mind. I guess there probably are still some girls that need to be set on the right path and reminded that it is not a good decision. So I hope I can do that. But more than anything, what I really hope that I can do is show other girls that did unfortunately fall down the same kind of path as me, that there is hope and there is another way and that you don't, you're not stuck. Cause I've gotten messages from girls who feel like because they've done this now, this is the only thing they can do. And they're just forever going to be stuck in that kind of industry and that they have no other, nothing else that they can offer the world and no one else will at least let them try to offer something else because they're so tainted. And um, I want to show them that actually that's not true and that there is hope and that you can not only find some sort of career, which unfortunately that's kind of why I don't speak about it too much right now because like, I don't really have anything to show for myself, although I am working on it. I am working on it. Milkmaid will be launching soon and I have been working my butt off. So I'm hoping that I can show that eventually, but I'm not at that stage right now, unfortunately. So like, I feel like I just can't really speak about it because I have nothing positive really to say, at least in that regard. I just have faith. I have hope that, that, that God has shown me that there is another way and I'm trying my best to listen to his plan as terrifying as it might be. So I hope to show women that, you know, if you are, if you do have a kind of entrepreneurial spirit that there are things you can do and that you don't have to do this for the rest of your life and that there is hope for you. But also I really hope to show girls that like, you know, you can have a relationship, you can have a family, you can have love. And I don't get me wrong. It's going to make things way harder, way more complicated. It's that's why again, don't freaking do it. If you're thinking about it, I seriously can't explain it enough. It is going to make finding love and being in a healthy relationship really difficult, but not impossible. I have the most amazing fiance on planet earth. I'm obsessed with him. I love him so much and I feel so grateful. Like he's literally a miracle in my life and God just really came through. And I'm so thankful. So I just want like, uh, it is possible to find love again, going to make things harder. Don't freaking do it. It's just not worth it, but you aren't hopeless or worthless there is still hope for you you can still find love you can still find success your life isn't over and this takes me back to that post where all the men were commenting really vile things about how no one will ever want you if you've done that and no why would anyone want you you're i don't know what they were saying but just really horrible things saying how women who've done that should pretty much be forced to be sterile like they were saying they should they should be banned from being able to have kids or adopt which i understand what they're saying I, I get their perspective, which I'm very against this whole thing, but like, geez, that's a little far. Don't you think you're going to just force sterilize women because they did, made a bad choice? Like, have you never made a bad choice? Oh my gosh. So I just want you to know. And again, I will make content on this when I feel ready, but for now, we're just going to get random rambles and a video of me cutting tomatoes. There is hope for you. And no matter what you've done, you know, like I see posts like that as well, but more so in the just being a hoe and sleeping around and how because you've done that now you'll never find a man and you're going to be alone forever and you're worthless and you have no value and I, it blows my mind again i am so supportive of waiting till marriage or at least being very selective with who you do go to bed with and i again obviously don't freaking do an only fans or get involved in anything like that i totally get where they're coming from like i really do agree with that but we don't live in that world and you can't you can't just say that someone is never going to have anything good in their life anymore now because they made a bad choice. I just think that that is so, such a horrible way to approach it or to view it. It, it makes me really sad because as if you haven't made a bad choice in your life, maybe not as bad 
and I'm so happy for you that you haven't made such a horrible mistake, but as if you haven't made a mistake and should that follow you for the rest of your life and you should never have, never have anything good again, I just think that that is not true. And so I'm just trying to send some hope and love to anyone who's made any kind of mistake, really. Don't let people tell you that like now your life is over and that you should just, you'd be better off dead or something because that's just not true. And there is hope. And that is um, one reason why I have been loving learning more about God. and. I will have to just, you know, I'm still learning. So I feel kind of like stupid talking about it because I have these thoughts in my head, but then I don't know how to actually articulate them all. But I'm at the point now where I'm like, hey, God is real. The more you look into science, science explains God. Like you have to, it's just, I wish I could explain it to you guys, but if you look into it, it's just, it's kind of undeniable as far as I'm concerned. There is a God and God loves you and God is not just gonna, abandon you because you made a mistake it's just like a child like god is kind of like you know sky daddy if you want to be silly and say that the same way a parent will love you like kids who murder someone their parents still love them like it's just god is so awesome with that he will always love you but he doesn't want you to continue to sin of course so anyways i just really believe that you can be reborn in Christ, and now I'm coming a little by the femper, aren't I? But seriously, it's such a beautiful idea, and I think it's really amazing. And you can go forth, and you can sin no more, and you can let your old self die and be reborn through God, and it's just a beautiful thing. So all I'm trying to say, really, in a really horrible roundabout way, is that you are amazing, and God loves you, and you have so much hope and so much potential, and so just don't give up on yourself, and don't let other people who, um, I don't know, just can't, I guess don't understand how one might fall for the lies of the devil and do some horrible things. They just don't get it, so don't let them tell you that your life is over now, because it's not. And trust God, trust his path for you, take whatever leap, that you are afraid to take, listen to God and hope and trust in him. And um, I really believe that you'll be pleasantly surprised at what can happen. So yeah, I wish I said that better, but <laughs> there you go. I just wanted to say that because it made me so sad. Like, of course it kind of hits home for me and I'm like, damn, it's depressing to think that someone could think about like, think that about me. And, but I also understand because I think that about me. So it's, you know, of course I've been through all there, I've been through all the thoughts of how, how can anyone go on or continue living having made such a drastic, drastically horrible life choice, of course. But then God was right there and he said, girl, I get you. Yes, what you did was wrong, but there is hope and I can redeem you. And so I want you to know that God can also redeem you or whoever you know, you know, if you're worried maybe about someone and they made a bad choice, but you love them, just, Keep on being there and loving them, but be, of course, be truthful and honest and tell them whatever they're doing is wrong and that you believe that there's something else for them that they can do. I don't know. I think people feel so trapped sometimes. Once you've made a decision, you kind of get stuck down that path and it is really, really hard to get out, but it's possible. So anyways, I guess I'll stop rambling. <laughs> just sending you lots of love okay and um go read your bible and go pray because trust me it'll make you feel better and yeah i'm gonna slice up all these tomatoes now and i'm going to remove the skin i showed you guys this last time but oh my gosh i just think it's so cool i'm happy that i i learned a new skill it's not much of a skill really but it's a new kitchen thing that i never knew how to do look at the skin Hopefully you can see. I cannot see the camera because my eyes are crap, but I think you can see the skin just peels right off. The easiest way to peel a tomato. I wonder if you could peel other things this way. Like, can you peel potatoes like this? Or is this only a tomato thing? In any event, I'm going to slice up the peeled tomatoes and the non-peeled tomatoes and put them all together and then I will be back. Oh, tomatoes all over my hands. All right, tomato update. We've got a whole chunk of tomatoes chopped with the skin. And then these are all my skin tomatoes that I also chopped up kind of roughly. And now we're gonna head to the garden to pick some fresh basil to throw in. I don't know if we need any other herbs. Maybe I'll grab some like thyme and oregano and stuff as well. We'll see. I'll see what I feel like doing. Oh my word, it feels like fall. It's so cold. It's like September 14th, I think. Anyways, time to pick 
some basil. Check out my lovely herb garden. I think I'm gonna grab a few extra herbs because I also wanna try hanging some to dry. So I'm gonna grab a bunch. I'll cut all this delicious basil. And I think one of those is rosemary and one is thyme. I forget. That's my little, oh yeah, that's thyme. I'm pretty sure that's rosemary. Did I not grow oregano? I thought I did, but I don't see it. <laughs> oh, maybe this is oregano. Is this oregano? Oh, it is. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to pick a bunch of herbs right now. Happy kiddos. Hi. <laughs> Look how beautiful my little herb haul. <laughs> I'll probably pick more, but this is a good start. Let's go inside and see what we can do. Hi, pretty girl. Hello. You're so cute. What a bobolin. What a fluffy chest. <laughs> hey, Zimmies. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Attack of the tripod. All right. So, time to make some tomato sauce. I just checked the recipe, and I actually don't need to add the basil for a couple of hours, so we'll do that after. So what I'm gonna do is take both of the bowls of tomatoes that I have and pour them into this pot here and get it simmering. Also supposed to throw in butter, olive oil, salt and pepper probably, I, didn't, I don't remember. <laughs> butter, olive oil, possibly salt and pepper. I'm gonna throw some in anyway, so must. Garlic and onion. Don't have any onions, of course. I don't know how that happened. I used up the last onion last night. So we're just gonna skip that. Maybe put some onion powder, something like that. And pretty much just throw it all into the pot and simmer for one to two hours. And sugar, I don't know how much sugar, but apparently you're supposed to put sugar in for some reason, I guess, to help it solidify. I don't know why, but I was talking to my friend last week at the wedding and I was telling him how I'm gonna make some tomato sauce this week and he said that his mom, who is Italian, so very authentic, she always puts sugar in for some reason, but we couldn't figure out what it was. Maybe I could Google that right now. Why put sugar in tomato sauce? Let's see. The reason for sprinkling a pinch of sugar into a simmering saucepan of tomatoes is simple. Sugar cuts the acidity of the tomatoes and creates an overall more balanced sauce huh i don't know what they mean by balanced texture or flavor but in any event we add a little sprinkling oh like literally a teaspoon of sugar so hardly anything and um yeah gonna make some tomato sauce and i'll update you soon Okay, so we made a sauce. As you can hear, it's simmering away. I don't know if I said, but I have to leave it for like two hours. Eventually, I will go in with a potato masher and try to mash the tomatoes a little bit so it's more of a thick sauce and less soupy. In the meantime, we're going to hang some of these herbs to dry. Now, as with the majority of the things, home steady, I've never done any of this before. Don't know what I'm doing, but we're gonna try, okay? So, Here's our little setup. We've got my beautiful basket of herbs. Just looking at this is making me so happy. And I've already done, I didn't actually pick a lot of lavender, but I've got a little bundle of lavender. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is grab a bundle, roughly an inch or so big. You want it to be, you know, relatively sizable, but not so big that the pieces in the middle can't dry. And then I'm gonna wrap them in some string. And then if you can, you might be able to see that little bit of string I hung on the ceiling. I'm gonna hang all these pieces to the string and then we're pretty much gonna leave it to dry. I don't know how long it will take. I've been reading different things, but possibly like around a month. And then once it's dry, you take it off, you peel all like the, the leaf and the actual herby pieces off and then we'll grind it up and we'll make my own little Italian seasoning, which is my favorite spice combo. So I'm really excited about this. And you know, we'll just see what happens. It's all of those things is just experimenting and learning. And it's just so much fun. So yeah, that's the plan. Everything smells really good. And I'm just gonna continue making my little herb bundles. 
I said it before and I'll say it again. Your girl cannot wait for the day she has a farm. And I know it will happen at some point, but I don't know when. And so I'm not going to just wait around until that time comes before I start learning all of these different home study things. I figure there's no harm done in experimenting and learning whatever I can right now with the little patch of greenery that I do have wanting to grow and cook food. So I just wanted to send a little bit of encouragement out there. If you too have got caught with the desire to farm and have a homestead bug, don't wait. There's no need to wait until you have enough money or you get lucky and you find the right spot to actually move and have land. Just start and grow where you're planted. Love that phrase. And just kind of see what happens because honestly, I think if you were to wake up tomorrow and be on a farm, would you even know what to do? Because I know I wouldn't. So I kind of love this little bit of time that I have right now and who knows how long that time will be. But this time to just learn and experiment and grow without the kind of pressure that I think would come with having a whole huge property and this kind of feeling like, oh, because I have this, I have to do something with it. This way I can just, mm, it smells so good. I can just ease into it all and learn at a nice kind of slow calming pace. And then by the time God blesses me with some property, I will hopefully at least have, you know, better understanding of what to do and I won't be so much like a fish out of water. So grow where you're planted, do what you can, grow some herbs on your windowsill, grow some tomatoes, make some tomato sauce, try canning or just make some sauce and put it in the freezer like I'm going to do today. Whatever, whatever you can do, just learning how to cook from scratch in and of itself is a huge thing. It's kind of crazy to me that a lot of people just don't. So learning that is an amazing skill to have, even if you never end up getting your farm. Now you know how to make home cooked meals, which will just be awesome. So that's my little bit of encouragement for you today. Okay, got my basket full of herbs. I've already started adding them to my little string that I take to the wall using some clothes pin. Clothes, clothes pins, clothes pegs. It looks so pretty, it smells amazing. I just really hope that the string stays up because all I used was some tape. Sorry, it's all blurry. Yeah, but doesn't it look gorge gorge? We still need to figure out what we're gonna do with this wall. So in the meantime, this kind of adds a little bit of decoration and makes it feel cozy and homey. So I'm loving it. All done. Look how beautiful this is. Oh my gosh, like even if this doesn't work out for decorative purposes, I'm obsessed. It really gives like the whole cottagey, homey, cozy, homesteady kind of feeling. So 10 out of 10, we recommend, even if you aren't growing any herbs, go to your grocery store, grab some herbs, hang them up. It's just cute. It feels really autumnal and fun and I'm loving it. I really think it's beautiful. So hopefully it works out, but either way, I'm happy. I'll give you a little close up. Now the string did already fall once, so I reinforced it a little bit. <laughs> and we'll cross our fingers that it stays up, but ain't it beautiful? Oh my gosh. I love it, I love it. Oh, okay, you guys are crooked and I don't know why, so sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, I have a few herbs left over that I'm going to throw into my tomato sauce, which has been simmering now for like an hour and a half. It's definitely gotten thicker. I used the masher to thicken it up a little bit. So now I'm just going to dice up all of my herbs. I've got pretty much one of everything. So I've got a little bit of, oh, I forget what everything is. I don't know what this is. <laughs> we definitely have basil. And I think this is rosemary, oregano. Oh, so that must've been thyme. In any event, I'm gonna dice these up super duper tiny and then throw them into the sauce. Okay, moment of truth. I'm gonna taste test the tomato sauce. It's only one o'clock, so we're not gonna actually eat it for like four hours. I'll just keep it warm on the stove. But let's try it and see what's good if I need to add any more herbs. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> Wow, that is so exciting.
my first ever homemade tomato sauce. I don't know why it took me this long. It's really so simple, but wow, that's delicious. I'm excited to properly eat it tonight. Mau mau. <laughs> Okay, well, that's pretty much everything for this video. I'm gonna go edit now, and then before you know it, it'll be my man will be home, and it'll be time for dinner. Um, thank you so much for watching. Hope you liked, hope you didn't mind my potentially incoherent rambles. <laughs> Seriously, I pray every night asking God to please make me articulate so that I can explain myself properly. Because the things I say in my head, I swear they are so smart, and then they come out and I sound like the dumbest person on earth. <laughs> Anyway, so thank you. If you did watch the whole video, that's amazing. It means a lot to me. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And also follow me on my other social media. I'm sorry, I'm always tearing up the rug. Come on, can you be quiet for a second, huh? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna go eat and then Follow me on social media. I'm at Gwen the Milkmaid on Instagram and TikTok. Um, and check out the Milkmaid Supply Co. I think by the time you're watching this, the website should be up. I've been working my butt off on that recently. So I think, you know, be a few weeks before you actually are watching this. So it should be up by now at least. So go check that out and subscribe to our, our newsletter so that you can be notified when everything is officially launched. Everything is handmade in Canada and there is as a result, very, very small amount of things available. So make sure you sign up so that you don't miss out because trust me, everything is so amazing and so cute and I'm so excited to finally share it all with you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll probably insert another little clip right after this just to show you the final dinner later on once you actually get to making it. I'm gonna use the zucchinis from the garden to make some zucchini noodles as well for me because can't eat pasta, it makes me want to die. I just can't eat greens that are, it's so hard to digest for some reason for me. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, that's all, stop rambling. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing amazing and I will see you again next Wednesday. I forget the day that I was gonna start posting all these videos, but I think it's on a Wednesday. Anyways, subscribe so that you don't miss out. Hit the little bell, assuming that's still a thing. And yeah, love you, bye.